welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgeway. I'm the author of On This Day in Tudor History, funnily enough, which has given its name to these daily talks and has served as the inspiration for them. All the research that I did uh, for that book has proved very useful. So today I'm taking you back to 1544, which was, of course, in the reign of King Henry VIII. But on this day in Tudor history, the 31st of July, 1544, the future Queen Elizabeth I wrote her earliest surviving letter. So she wasn't queen at this time, her father was king. She, of course, was the daughter of King Henry VIII by his second wife, Queen Anne Boleyn. And Elizabeth was just 10 years old at this time. And she wrote this letter to her stepmother, Henry VIII's sixth and final wife, Queen Catherine Parr. And at the time, Catherine was acting as regent while the king was away in France. And this letter was written in Italian and in an absolutely beautiful italic hand. And I'm going to read you Elizabeth's letter because I just love it. Inimical fortune, envious of all good and ever revolving human affairs, has deprived me for a whole year of your most illustrious presence. And not thus content, has yet again robbed me of the same good. Which thing would be intolerable to me did I not hope to enjoy it very soon? And in this, my exile, I well know that the clemency of your highness has had as much care and solicitude for my health as the king's majesty himself. By which thing I am not only bound to serve you, but also to revere you with filial love, since I understand that your most illustrious highness has not forgotten me every time you requested from you. For heretofore, I have not dared to write to him. Wherefore, I now humbly pray your most excellent highness that when you write to his majesty, you will condescend to recommend me to him, praying ever for his sweet benediction and similarly entreating our Lord God to send him best success and the obtaining of victory over his enemies so that your highness and I may as soon as possible rejoice together with him on his happy return. No less pray I God that he would preserve your most illustrious highness, to whose grace, humbly kissing your hands, I offer and recommend myself. From St. James's, this 31st of July, your most obedient daughter and most faithful servant, Elizabeth. Now, although past historians, uh, people like Agnes Strickland, uh, the Victorian historian, have picked up on Elizabeth's word exile there and the fact that she hasn't she says she hasn't seen Catherine for a year, they've kind of assumed that Elizabeth had done something to anger her father, the king. And uh, yeah, they've, they've sort of uh, used that as evidence that Elizabeth was not in the king's favour and that she'd been banished from court. But historian David Starkey, whose book on Elizabeth I would highly recommend, it's called Different Things in Different Countries, but if you just Google Elizabeth, date by David Starkey, you'll find it. He has pointed out that Elizabeth's relationship with her father was very good at this point. She'd been restored to the succession and she dined with the king and her half-siblings just a month earlier. So she wasn't in any kind of exile. It was just that she hadn't seen Catherine recently. Uh, they'd just been sort of kept apart by busy uh, their busy timetables, their schedules. What Elizabeth refers to in her letter is ever revolving human affairs, i.e. the royal family's very busy schedules. They just kept missing each other. But the main purpose of this letter anyway, as Starkey also points out, is to show off Elizabeth's scholarship, to show off the fruits of her education, her courtly Italian, which is what she used in writing this letter, her beautiful handwriting. It's, it's all a sort of showcase uh, for her stepmother just to see how Elizabeth's education is coming on. And exactly 
four years later to the day, on the 31st of July, 1548, the now 14-year-old Elizabeth was writing another letter to her stepmother. Now, Catherine at this time was dowager queen because Henry VIII had died uh, by this point. And Catherine was married to Thomas Seymour, first Baron Seymour of Sudley. It's the last known letter, last known correspondence between these two women. And it was written just before the pregnant Catherine Parr took to her chamber and just weeks before she died. Uh, they think that she died of childbed fever, a sort of infection uh, picked up um, in birth. In a, again, in a beautiful italic hand, Elizabeth wrote to Catherine, Although your highness's letters be most joyful to me in absence, yet considering what pain it is for you to write, your grace being so sickly, your commendations were enough in my lord's letter. I much rejoice at your health with the well-liking of the country, with my humble thanks that your grace wished me with you till you were weary of that country. Your highness were like to be cumbered if I should not depart till I were weary of being with you. Although it were the worst soil in the world, your presence would make it pleasant. I cannot reprove my Lord for not doing your commendations in his letter, for he did it. And although he had not yet, I will not, sorry, in his letter, for he did it. And although he had not, yet I will not complain on him. For he shall be diligent to give me knowledge from time to time how his busy child doth. And if I were at his birth, no doubt I would see him beaten for the trouble he hath put you to. Master Denny and my lady, with humble thanks, prayeth most entirely for your grace, praying the almighty God to send you a most lucky deliverance, and my mistress with wisheth no less, giving your highness most humble thanks for her commendations. Written with very little leisure this last day of July, your humble daughter, Elizabeth. Now, Elizabeth, at this point, she'd been sent away from Catherine's household to reside with Catherine's good friends. In fact, she mentions them in the letter, Sir Anthony Denny and his wife at Cheshunt. And she's obviously uh, receiving letters from uh, Thomas Seymour, she calls him my lord, um, about Catherine and what's going on and the impending birth of you know, the baby that they believe at this point is um, you know, a little boy, a son and heir for them. And Elizabeth had been sent away because Thomas Seymour had been reported as acting inappropriately with the young Elizabeth. And Catherine had been reported as finding Elizabeth and Seymour in an embrace in each other's arms. And Catherine had to send Elizabeth away not only to protect Catherine's marriage, uh, but also to protect Elizabeth's reputation. So that is why Elizabeth got sent away from the household to the Denny's. And Elizabeth mentions how she would see this uh, baby beaten because of the trouble it's caused Catherine. So obviously Catherine was very uncomfortable, perhaps having uh, pains and not really enjoying the pregnancy. But she did give birth uh, to a daughter, uh, Mary, on the 30th of August, 1548. But sadly, Catherine died on the 5th of September, 1548. And little Mary Seymour uh, sadly disappears from the records after March 1550, and it's thought that uh, she had died by that point. She'd, uh, she'd died in early childhood, so she's mentioned uh, in March 1550, and then she disappears, so she must have died sort of soon after that. Because Mary actually had um, a big household, a royal household, and she was taken in by Catherine Brandon, Duchess of Suffolk, as a kind of favour. And Catherine was having to ask the Royal Council for money to keep this, uh, this household going. You know, she wasn't just caring for Mary, she was having to pay for her household as well. And so she requested money. And her requests, everything goes silent after that point. So Mary must have died. 
So on this day in Tudor history, 1544 and 1548, we have two letters from Elizabeth to her beloved stepmother, written at very different times in Elizabeth's life, but still at points when she really respected and loved her stepmother, Catherine Parr. Now I've got another book recommendation for you. This is Elizabeth I Collected Works. That's a bit dusty. Um, this has got, um, it's got prayers in, it's got speeches, it's got letters, it's got all sorts of things that Elizabeth wrote. So it's called Elizabeth I Collected Works and it's edited by Leah S. Marcus, uh, Janelle Muller and Mary Beth Rose. And it's just great if you're uh, interested in Elizabeth and her works, poetry, prayers, letters, uh, translations, speeches, anything that Elizabeth is responsible for, you will find in that book. Okay, well, I'll be back tomorrow with another On This Day in Tudor History for you. In the meantime, you can subscribe by clicking right about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as videos go live, and please do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it as well, as that would be very helpful. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye.